Hello everyone, it's Ren here. Welcome to my room and I hope guys that you have been enjoying the start of the week. I'm very happy to see you today and we are going to do another five things kind of topic because it seems to be popular with you guys. You seem to not think that it is necessarily kind of a superficial kind of approach. What matters is the content I put into it and I have to say I very much enjoy myself when I do them so I fully intend on continuing to do this. Now, today I decided that I was going to do a little list of the five places where you are very unlikely to find an INFJ. Uh, it's not to say that it's completely impossible, but I would say it's one of the most unlikely places where anyone who is particularly enamored with the idea of meeting those old souls that INFJs are, <clears throat> you know, uh, should try to if not avoid those places, because you might like them for other reasons, but you know, uh, at least not expect to meet an INFJ there. So, number one, supermarkets. INFJs hate supermarkets. And the reason why they hate supermarkets is because I think that supermarkets, and when I say supermarkets, I mean like large supermarkets, are a source of infinite anxiety to them. Anxiety not only because there are so many people in supermarkets, and so Supermarkets are going to be anxiety inducing for any introvert, particularly an introvert with a slight tendency toward neuroticism. But it's also because, according to my theory, <clears throat> um, there is a particular dynamic in supermarkets that involves a very weird instrumental and thoroughly dehumanized relationship between the subject, the human being, and the object. So you're surrounded by a multiplicity of objects and the only meaningful relationship between those objects is that there might be a chance someone that you don't know might buy one of them and go home and use money to do that. And money is also an invisible instrument that doesn't have any meaning. So there is a pervasive meaninglessness involved in this. And because as an introvert, the INFJ tends to always have his defense is kind of high up against objects. Imagine if there is a vast quantity of meaningless objects connecting in meaningless relationships with human beings. It's terrifying to the INFJ. And I have to say, I used to date, you know, this is uh, <laughs> for, for, for your information, if you're curious, I used to date an INFJ woman actually quite for quite a few years. And, you know, there, there's obviously going to be situations where you have to go to a supermarket. You can't solely focus on going to smaller kind of businesses. This is always going to be a preferred option for an INFJ, even if it means paying a little bit more because the human element is so much stronger, there's more meaning. But sometimes, you know, it's just not affordable over an entire month, for instance. So you'll have to go to the supermarket. And I remember my girlfriend and I at the time, my ex, we'd, we'd be in the supermarket in the middle of that huge, vast edifice, white as death. And like, we'd occasionally just look at each other and be like, yeah, we are shaking. Let's get this over with as soon as we can. So that's the first That's the first uh, place that you will almost certainly never see INFJs. Second place, the busy beaches. Now you might say this will only concern, concern a limited amount or a limited number of, you, can, you might say privileged people, or you know, at, at least people who are maybe not socially privileged, but people who are privileged to live near a coastal area. But let's assume that you do or that you go on holidays there. If you go to the beach and it's not busy, you know, great. Massive expanse, NI can express itself, thoughts can float. NI is very connected to, to water because, you know, it's a, it's a dynamic fluid, water-like function. And I think that it sees itself reflected in water. But if you're surrounded by people with their kind of borderline naked bodies and they're all of different, you know, like body shapes and you don't, you don't know them, it's not exactly the same kind of repulsion that would be experienced in, in supermarkets where it's the relationship between the subjects and the object that, that's kind of anxiety inducing. It's more this like sudden eruption of like very close proximity to people you know nothing about. That can be quite anxiety inducing as well. So beaches that are not too busy, yes, of course, you could find INFJs, but if you have a very busy beach, lots of extroverts, lots of sensors will enjoy that. Maybe other people, but you'll almost never find an INFJ. And in my experience, INFJs tend to be quite modest physically. Um, maybe you guys can let me know in the comments if that's your case as well. It certainly is mine. Now, the third place where you're very unlikely to find an INFJ is a speed dating venue. 
And I think that maybe this speaks for itself. Um, there is a misconception according to which INFJs don't like dating. In fact, I think this is not true. I think that INFJs quite enjoy the idea of dating. But it's the same as always with INFJs. They, they can enjoy the idea of dating if there was in principle a way to ensure in advance in their projected visions and plans about the date to ensure that the date will be meaningful, that there will be time, conversation, that judgments would not be made too quickly, that each part intuitively would have all the duration necessary to get to know each other in a meaningful way. And that's essentially the antithesis of speed dating where, you know, the main strength, the main point is going to be all about making a quick positive impressions as quick as you can, as soon as you can. And this is not what the NFJ is interested in. First of all, they don't care. They will not be impressed by a woman or a man who does that. Second of all, this is also not where they excel. So on both those grounds, they will tend to avoid speed dating venues at all costs. The fourth uh, particular, I'm noticing my cat. I, I know that some of you guys have been asking me, uh, where is Hazelnut? She's there. I think she's asking for food. So after this video, I'll have to take care of her, but she's been doing okay in case you were, you were worrying. The fourth place anyway that um, INFJs are going to struggle in and that you, where you will not see them is networking events. Now, problem with networking events, it's not quite the same as speed dating venues, but there is a connection there in the sense that it's a, there's a very instrumental reason why people are there. They have to make an impression. Now, they, they might have more time in networking events, but the problem is, unlike dating, you don't even get to pick if you like the person physically. You have to talk to people just because of their position and try to seduce them. The INFJ, of course, is able to seduce people because of their very fine acuity of perception. You know, they can use their FE in very targeted ways, informed by NI, so they can excel at that. And this is this is definitely true, but sometimes people assume that because this is true, they must be good in networking events. But no, and the reason why is because those qualities are not enough. You also need to have the interest. If you don't have the interest, you will not have the motivation. If you don't have the motivation, you will be bad, you will try to avoid it. And so networking events are just absolute death for INFJs. Of course, some INFJs, by the force of, you know, um, imminence, nature will have jobs where they'll have to do networking events. That does not mean that you will see them. That does not mean that you will find them. They will probably be in the bathroom faking to have uh, big gastric issues or whatever issue that allows them to be away from people. And finally, I wanted to mention another kind of place where you're very unlikely to see INFJs at all. This could be for the later generation among the viewers, but you never know, like later generations might be uh, interested in this as well. It's cruises, ship cruises. You know, these the ship cruises, they seem to be so popular. Hey, guy. Uh, the sh the ship, ship cruises seem to be so popular these days. People go to all sorts of places. They're becoming more and more affordable. My granny absolutely loves them. My mom loves them. Both sensors, but, you know, that could be beside the point. But the problem with the ship cruise is that there's one element about it that is so anathema to an INFJ way of expressing himself, and that is... A ship, what does it mean metaphorically, a ship? It's a closed space, it's a closed. If you wanna escape, physically you can't, socially you can't. But even in terms of the raw expression of your intuition, like the dominant in intuitive needs to have like a vast expanse ahead where in theory at least they could project themselves. Like within the walls of a ship, not only you can't do that, but if you were to do that, you just fall off the ship and drown. And INFJs with their inferior SE are likely to not fare very well against sharks and all sorts of dangerous fish and mammals. So cruises, you know, you will never find an INFJ on a cruise. You will never find an INFJ in a networking event because they'll be hiding. You'll never find an INFJ in a speed dating venue because they will just not register for that. You'll never find an INFJ in a busy beach, nor will you find an INFJ in a supermarket. One exception being if you see like a figure, a crooked figure that's kind of shaking and trying to leave the place as soon as they can. Now, that might be an INFJ, but you will not be able to have a conversation with them. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like. This helps with the promotion of the video and consider subscribing. And I will see you in a couple of days, guys. Bye-bye.